Thank you, Carl. You know, Carl bought a new house recently. His dream house. It has one bedroom, two kitchens. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, okay. Got it. <laughs> no, he he spent uh, at least two hours preparing for this. It was great. Spent two hours a day preparing for it, and the rest of the eight hours balding. So, yeah, sorry. I just wanted to get to you a little bit. So I'm going to talk about uh, writing timeless content using content modules. So I'm a copywriter, and... Everyone always wants to know the grammar, the structure to write in, and I never really thought of it that way, so I'm gonna show you. And to give you a little bit of my background, I don't know how old these pictures are, but um, I'm copywritingcourse.com is my blog. I ran one of the first financial blogs online starting in 2003 or something called NevBlog. I'm part of AppSumo, Sumo, House of Rave, a company I sold, Real Savvy, The Hustle, and Pink Java Media. So I have a lot of experience doing content for a wide variety of companies in the software space and all sorts of stuff. And so I want to tell you this tale of two blogs. So NevBlog and Copywriting Course. Copywriting Course, my recent one, NevBlog was the original one I started. And I started NevBlog at a time when no one really had blogs on the internet. People didn't even really know where they were. And so I had that first mover advantage. And I still fucked it up. So what I would do is I would write these financial articles and spend tons and tons of time on them. And as you know, you put out a piece of content and you get this little bump of traffic. But then what happens is you don't post and you get this dip. So then I would race and race and race and try to make another piece of content and I would get another bump of traffic, but then a dip. And then you have to keep doing this. And as you can imagine, this does get pretty exhausting after a while and most people can't keep up with that pace. And so NevBlog traffic stayed the same for about 10 years. And it's still the same, just tapered off. So this is a kind of depressing graph for me because I put 10 years of work into something and it never went up. It actually just went down over the years. So I was like, that's, that's not a good use of time to me. And of course, there was no planning for any ar of the articles. Uh, it's just random stuff. And I liked to get a lot of posts out, like a post a week, two posts a week. And that seems to be what a lot of companies that do content still do to this day. They're just like, we need a post. I'm sure some of you have been told they need to put out a blog post. How many of you are in charge of writing content at a company or have ever done it? Okay. How many of you have been charged, uh, the person telling you to write the content, they're like, we want to rank number one on Google. That's usually the end goal, right? So I'm gonna show you the best way I know how to do that with a relatively consistent thing. So here's a copywriting course, a copywriting blog. And um, this, I don't post that much on the blog, but within the first year of it becoming a real company, I surplused all the uh, traffic I ever got on NevBlog within one year. And I probably only put out six posts in that year. And so what was the difference? So first, I took a few minutes to do research. We'll do that together in a second. I spent time making the best post in the world. Think about it. It's Google's job to point you to the best resource to answer a query in the world, whether that is a tweet, whether it is a web page, whether it is a, a podcast, whether it's a YouTube video. In the future, it'll be some, like I don't know, VR experience or something like that. It's Google's job to point you to the best resource in the world for that query. And so that's a great way to think about writing your content and I saw this steady and consistent and as you can see it's very steady very consistent rise in traffic posting maybe under four times a month so very manageable and like why would you want to do this why would you want to put all this effort into content I'm sure I don't have to tell this crowd but here's an exa a screenshot from my Infusionsoft and each one of these is a post how many old members sign up and how many new members signed up zoomed in it looks more like this so that writer's block post over there, looks like it sucks. Only four of my old members signed up to get the little download. Zero people signed up. Okay, kind of a waste of time. Um, but look at this one, copywriter salaries. 23 new people this week signed up to that post. Are now on my email list, now on my autoresponder. 2% of those will usually buy from me. That's kind of cool. And then this other one, recurring revenue calculator. 50 people this week signed up to that. Go through the autoresponder, 2% of them buy from me. Kind of cool. So as you can see, you add all these numbers up, 4, 10, 64, 3, 77, 23, 4. And remember, there, this is just one page of the 161 or so posts. So as you can imagine, this adds up to several thousand people a week signing up from content I wrote in the past. That's a good reason to get good at this. So how can you do it, and how can you salvage non-performing pieces of content? That's my favorite. If I come into a company and they want me to rank something that's on page eight 
to number one, that's the easiest because I actually don't have to really write anything new. And I'll show you how I do it. So I recently went to Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And I was just looking up stuff like fun things to do in Rio de Janeiro. So I thought I'd base this talk off of that. And this is page eight, OK? Page eight of a bazillion results. And I saw this interesting one over here, 11 best things to do in Rio de Janeiro in 2018. Well, I can clearly tell that they have not updated their content, right? And so I thought I'd pick on this post a little bit. So first of all, update that to 2019, right? But here's what I saw was, was going on with this post. It's this couple that travels the world, coupletravelthe-world.com. I don't know, not a big site or anything. 11 best things to do in Rio de Janeiro. So I'm, it's kind of sad to me sometimes. I'm like, this couple travels the world. They probably are trying to make a business out of this. They're spending a lot of time doing this, but they're ranking on page eight, meaning they get zero clicks ever, right? So how can we make this post better? And you can think about a post that you were uh, instructed to write, and you can apply the same process. So here's the entire post. It's a very basic post, 11 things to do. You got a headline, you got some text describing it, and some random ass pictures, headline, text, pictures. OK, standard stuff, nothing amazing over here. Same stuff, see the Christ statue, see Sugarloaf Mountain. OK. So I looked it up on Ahrefs. So they, have, they rank for 17 keywords and get zero traffic. So kind of sad. And their highest position is 35, meaning no one will ever click on it. So this is looking a little bit depressing. Most people would give up on this piece of content and write something else about some other place. But we can still salvage this. So most places, they'll say, uh, well, what do we do? Do we make the post longer? Do we rewrite the words? What do we do? More images? Just give up? Usually these are the three options. So here's the four-step process. It's, it's quite simple. Um, and you could do this with any piece of content without writing anything else. That's the greatest part. There's no extra copywriting to do. So step one, create an angle. Um, things to do in Rio. I looked it up. This Ahrefs runs again. And besides these weird anomalies here, which are more likely just flukes, the same four companies have dominated the search results for three years. That is a very bad sign, meaning things to do in Rio it's going to be a shot in hell that you're going to rank above TripAdvisor, The Planet D, and Lonely Planet. It's just, it's just not going to happen for the most part, right? So another bad sign. So I looked at their stuff, and I was just like, we're Nadia and Mike. They're a couple who love to travel. I looked at their Instagram. They have a large Instagram following. I was pretty surprised. And every single picture is like this, lovey-dovey in the mountains doing something romantic. So I was like, OK, clearly everything is about them too. It's like romance, honeymoon type stuff. So what's the angle? It's going to be romantic stuff. So look at all the what, wrong slide. Here we go. Romantic, love, honeymoon. That's the angle. So I was just like, OK, all their stuff is like that. Let's choose that angle. So I looked it up. And this isn't the greatest sign in the world, but I actually everything's below 10 volume. But look how many there are. Romantic things to do in Rio de Janeiro. Romantic restaurants, romantic hotels, romantic cottages, Rio de Janeiro, romantic getaways, romantic comedy sets. There's a ton of stuff. And these are all known as the long tail. Everyone's heard of the long tail. Do you know what that is? Where it's just, it's not things to do in Rio, but it's things to do in Rio that are romantic. Things to do in Rio for honeymooners. That's the long tail. So that is what we're going to go after with our angle. So step two, spice up that headline. This is best basically making your headline a little bit more clickbaity. We all know how to do this. So 11 best things to do in Rio de Janeiro. Yawn, boring, not very good. So instead, I came up with a couple of other headlines. Um, we're going to keep the, sl the slug the same, things to do in Rio de Janeiro. But the headline is either going to be romantic things to do in Rio de Janeiro. OK, better. How to have a romantic trip in Rio de Janeiro for couples, lovebirds, and honeymooners, all keywords that I looked up pre before. And so the one I settled on was a romantic getaway guide for Rio de Janeiro, including hotels, restaurants, and fun things to do. And of course, these are all long tail keywords that I had looked up before. OK, so just with that headline improvement alone, we could probably move up in the search engines to like page six instead of eight. But that still means zero traffic. So we got to do something else. So I inserted my new headline into the post, and that was their post image. Now, that image is very generic and kind of sucks and doesn't convey the romance aspect of it. So we need to make a grabbing image. <laughs> yeah, so it's just the, the Christ statue of Rio de Janeiro, meh. 
So let's add a bunch of hearts and shit like that to it. So it <laughs> indicates that it's romantic, right? This is all made in Google Drive, so very ghetto, I know. But this is a better one. It at least conveys that this is going to be for couples. This is for honeymooners. This is for lovebirds. Even the beers, there's two of them, see? So that's, that's a much better image that conveys what they're going to see. And so we have a better headline and a better image. Okay, but that's just the first part of it. The content has to get better. And this is where most people get stuck because they're like, crap, what part do we update? Let's add more words. I heard most posts are 4,000 words long. That's what ranks in Google. But that's all bullshit. Here's how you do it. So this is the last step and the most important one, and there's a bunch of these after this. Um, so add more helpful modules to your content. So you know, have anyone ever used like MailChimp or any of these like common email senders, right? They have these little modules that you can click and drag like an image and it boop, pops it in. You take a little text area, boop, and it pops it in. That's a little module. That's how we're going to think about our content as a module. So the first module I like to do that is the simplest, easiest, most brain dead, you can have an assistant do it, is you make a cheat sheet or summary or table of contents, whatever you want to call it. And I basically took their entire post and put it into this little cheat sheet, as much as I could fit on this slide. And then you can link to those headers in the post. So right away, your post has everything listed out so people know what they're going to see. You can also make this into a cheat sheet at the very end that people can just take a screenshot of. So already, we have made our post a little bit better because we have a table of contents and a cheat sheet. We didn't write anything. We haven't written a single word yet. The next one. Make up your own unique scale or rating system. Now, not every post is going to use every single one of these modules. It's just kind of plug and play based on whatever you're writing. But my, f my favorite one is this guy named Doug DeMuro on YouTube. He's a big car guy. And he made up the Doug score. That's <laughs> it's called the Doug score. And he put out a Google spreadsheet with his rating of like Ferraris, Audis, everything like that. And now serious car people talk about the Doug score. It just made this shit up. It didn't do anything. It's just his own little rating. And so I thought, well, why can't we make our own rating for this Rio de Janeiro post? So I made the Rio romance score. So people want, if people are looking up honeymoon stuff to do in Rio, they probably want to know if it's romantic or not. So we made a sortable table, and Tour of Flavella is a one out of a five. That doesn't seem very romantic. I'd probably avoid that if I was looking for romantic stuff. But they can sort and see the most romantic thing is watch a sunset at Aprabador or whatever. So that's the best one to do. Already, this is a, more, a, a better post that's answering people's questions about what's the most romantic. I don't know if you all use table press for WordPress, but it is the most badass free plugin ever. And you can make these sortable tables. People can search. It really makes your post more like a piece of software than just a piece of content. So now we've got. A summary, we got a cheat sheet, and we got a score. And we still haven't written anything. It's already a better post. Other thing, plot out a helpful map. So most people will put a map and drop pins. Pins are stupid because I don't know what Rio looks like. I, I, don't, I don't understand what that is. So when I put Christ the Redeemer is over there, I'm like, oh, the, the Christ statue. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Or a beach, whatever, Sugarloaf Mountain. Putting pictures on a travel-related post is awesome. Picture galleries, some people put so many pictures in their post that it gets kind of hard to scroll and it breaks up the flow of the content. So almost every WordPress theme will do picture galleries already. So you can always embed a picture gallery with more pictures. Also, for this post, they have a lot of pictures on their Instagram that they can't fit in there, so it's much better. Um, then this one, this is one of my favorite, especially for travel posts or if you're comparing softwares or something like that. The price, like everyone wants to know the price of stuff. So in this, I made another table press thing that says how much the hotel cost, how much dinner cost, coconuts on the beach, cabs, favela tour, and if it was worth it or not. This is super helpful because someone could say that like, oh, the favela tour was $145 a person outside of my budget, and it's not worth it. We should skip it. Thank you, post. So the hotel. $300 a night. This is just to like, show people what to expect. And they can even sort by what's the cheapest, most expensive. And then they broke it down by day one, day two, all that. So you can see the whole price of the trip. Already, this is way, way, way better of a post. We still haven't written anything. 
Calculators. This is where I assume most content is going to go. In 1999, it was awesome if you could describe to someone um, how much money they want to make. You could describe the formula and they could do it. Now, with jQuery, with JavaScript, you could just do it all for them. So calculators are a big way. I get a lot of traffic. So I say, what's your revenue goal? $100,000. How many months? 12 months. And it just breaks it down. And this isn't some like mind-blowing calculation or anything here, but it really helps people see that, like, oh, if I sell a $20,000 product, I only need five people to make $100,000. Or I need 5,000 people to buy a $20 product. So that's just a helpful calculator, and these are great modules to add in if you have the programming chops or you can pay someone an Upwork 100 bucks to do this for you. Um, generators are very similar to calculators. So for example, I was making this titles post, like how to come up with titles. Um, so I was like, why don't I just make a generator? So whatever you type in that box gets automatically put in bold. It's not a very complicated piece of software. But if I want to generate titles about copywriting, it was like, copywriting changed my life forever. The first time I heard about copywriting, it changed everything. Copywriting having kids changed my life forever in a great way. It just comes up with hundreds of ideas that someone can just plug and play. Not all of them are going to be good. Not all of them are going to be relevant for the people. But one of them might. So this is a really, really cool way that I think content is going to start moving. And you're probably going to start seeing more and more of these at the top of the search results. Um, the other one, scrape and analyze a data set. People are usually lazy. So when they write content, they just talk about other stuff they've seen in the top results of Google. But I wanted to do a post about YouTube. And I was just like, I'm just regurgitating everything that I see on Google. So what else can I do? So I paid someone on Upwork to scrape the top 10 YouTube channels and see how many uh, views they had over time. And what I was kind of surprised was that a lot of the top YouTubers took like three years before they ever got traction on their videos. So there's one guy who's one of the top guys. He was doing videos for like four years before he got 100 views on one of his videos. That was very interesting to me. So I did that and analyzed it and just put it into uh, spreadsheets and put all the docs out. And this post started ranking for a very high level YouTube word, which was pretty awesome. There's no way I would have ranked without doing this data that only copywriting course had. Cool module. And then similarly, big lists or tables. A lot of times, instead of talking about something, you could just gather all the information and, and put it out. So for copywriter salaries, I was writing a post about that. And I was like, I think if someone's typing in copywriter salaries on Google, they probably just want to see what copywriters make. So I typed it in myself. Sure enough, it was just a bunch of Glassdoor reviews. It was a bunch of random job posts on Indeed.com. So I was like, what if we just get all of the ones on the internet and stick them in a big file? So once again, went on, I went on Fiverr this time, paid someone to scrape every listing and put it in a big doc. And then I just put that doc into table press. And it started ranking number one almost immediately because if you wanted to know what copywriter salaries were, copywriting course was literally the only place where you saw a big aggregate of those things. I didn't write anything else in the post, and it started ranking number one. Still no writing. So this is a really, really awesome one that's pretty easy to do. And then this one is a fun and sneaky one. Uh, make shareable templates. People love downloading docs for some reason. I don't get it. You put the same information in a blog post, but they love clicking on a doc because they could save it and never look at it again. But there's some fun uses for that. For example, I like spamming Facebook groups. But the thing is, if you just drop copywritingcourse.com slash salaries or whatever, people get really pissed at you. But if I take that same information, put it in a doc, and write copywritingcourse.com all over the doc, they don't mind. <laughs> so then, then they're like, thank you for posting this, Neville. I appreciate it. So this was a copywriting command center, and I dropped it in all the different copywriting groups I'm part of, and they loved it. They ate it up, even though you can see this on the blog post readily. So making shareable templates and just giving it away, a lot of times you don't even have to sign up for these is pretty awesome. And then this one's really important. I know these, I always thought these looked so cheesy, like you make the little rendering of the book and stuff like that. It looks scammy. But here's the thing, they work. People actually click these and download them and sign up their email every day. There's going to be several hundred people today that click one of these on my site alone. So they definitely work. And the cool thing, so I used to do this. Here's just a helpful tip on PDF downloads. A lot of people will take the time to make the PDF download, which is stupid. What you should do is Command A, just copy everything from your post into a Google Doc, format it, 
just a little bit and just give away the doc. That way they can go file, download as, PDF, CSV, whatever they want, whatever format they want. It's the easiest way to do it. So you can make these very easy and not get bogged down in the whole making a PDF thing. And then the last thing, the last module, that's not really a module, but it's just like, get visitors to take any action next. So whenever some company's like, what do you think is blog post? What do you think is this about page? What do you think of this homepage? The first thing I do, I don't even read it. It doesn't matter. I go to the bottom and I say, well, what am I supposed to do next? Is there anything? And usually you scroll to the bottom and there's nothing for the customer to do. They just read the post and then they leave. That's, that defeats the entire purpose of the content. So you have to have some sort of action. It could be a link to your Instagram, sign up to our newsletter, download this post, buy our guide, just something. So that's the last of the modules. And if you've noticed, we didn't write anything this entire time. <laughs> we haven't written a single word. So with those modules, let me just give you some like interesting thoughts on the way to view content instead of just like long posts. So if you think of each of your posts as a product, that really helps. It's like an asset that gets better over time. You can always change it. It's fluid. A post doesn't have to stay the same. You can always change it around. Um, with social media, people are so tempted to write a little blurb, take a picture, and post it. The problem with that is that is a one-time disposable piece of content you can't really reuse. If you write a giant piece of content first, you could break it up into thousands of little social posts forever, and your social posts link back to the big post. So you create this nice virtuous cycle. Whereas a lot of people that spend all their time just posting on Instagram, they have like the one-offs, and it never turns into an asset. It's just a tiny post that gets forgotten about two days after you post it. Um, the other thing, social platforms are incentivized to make you feel like there's a lot of activity. So you see all the hearts, all the likes, all the kind of stuff. Makes you feel good, but it does not create an asset. And use the social platforms just as a way to feed your own site. Some people will try to build their Instagram, build their Twitter. You should be thinking of it just as a free source of traffic because it will go away. And this is an important concept here. So it used to be X. It always, it used to be something. So who's been on the internet since like 2010? 2005? 2000? You've been on since like 1960 or something like that. I know. But yeah, but you, but you probably remember this. So it used to be delicious. Does anyone remember that? The bookmarking service? Who in the hell uses it anymore? It used to be dig.com. Then it used to be Craigslist, it used to be Orkut, it used to be Zanga, it used to be GeoCities, Friendster, Periscope, Meerkat, LinkedIn, LinkedIn Post, Google Video. Google Video's dead now. Google Plus, everyone moved over to Google Plus, remember that? There's courses about how to go to Google Plus, they're going to take over social networking. It's dead, it's gone. Google AdSense, then it used to be Facebook Pages. Remember like Nike spending millions of dollars to build their Facebook page? No one goes to Facebook Pages anymore. It turned into groups. Now groups are going down because it's saturated. It used to be Medium, it was Facebook Ads. Now Facebook Ads are super expensive. Now it was Instagram posts. Now Instagram's getting expensive. Then it was face Instagram stories, Instagram TV, YouTube. Now it's going to be Twitch. But it used to be something else. So every social platform that you are building on is going to die or get saturated and you will not be shown on it anymore. It just happens over and over and over and over. And the one thing you have that's an asset is your website, is your posts. That is the one thing that has stayed constant from the 70s internet to now. So be careful if you are doing this, because it will come back to haunt you. So with that, what should a post contain? Here's kind of a little cheat sheet of all the stuff. Um, and I think that's my talk. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, shit. I ruined the surprise. <laughs> Wait. Wait. That's good. I was going to do the, the Steve Jobs thing. I have no idea how much time I took. Um, oh, uh, wait, wait, go back. So one more thing. So to show you that like, if you make a piece of content, you could break it up into smaller things. I actually, I don't like making a, post, a whole speech and then like I do it, it's recorded and then it's done. So what I did, I made a whole blog content strategy thing out of this thing. So Pep, I took your talk and made it into a blog post for myself. So, so I made this entire blog post about it. Now this is going to be something that lives on my site forever. This video will eventually get old and, and, and go out of style. This one I can always update. So I still made this into something shareable that I can use forever. And, is that? By the way, if you want this entire thing, so I used modules in the post. 
So to make this, I put all the slides there, but I also made the summary of this entire post. These are just the headlines of all my slides. And now I have a cool little cheat sheet I can give away. I also made another module. <laughs> uh, uh, come on. Yeah, I made the little blog content strategy, cheesy little PDF download. And now people, every day, there's probably like three people, I think, that are downloading this already. So <laughs> I'm actually making subscribers and sales off this talk already. And it's going to live on my <laughs> domain. Uh. And this can turn into like a bazillion different social posts. So I made three social posts I loaded into Buffer already. And I used the images to promote it on Facebook, so three different posts on Facebook, three different posts on LinkedIn, three different posts on Twitter. And all of these link back to my blog posts. Zero minutes, nice. <laughs> I'm done, almost. And uh, <laughs> uh, uh. sure, there we go, yeah. <laughs>